Well, I've got a measurement session that's going to happen here another day or so, but uh, what it is is we're going to dial in this fixture. Notice I've got this big, big old plate here, the big backbone for this fixture. And what's nice is my client would just give me the part in place on the fixture as well as what is needed to dial in. So as I zoom around this thing, you can see I've got some some pins and some pads and um, and some other some other items in there uh, that I'm going to be dialing in. But one thing I wanted to show you guys is if I look straight down, so this is kind of a tooling coordinate system. If I look straight down on that backbone, you can see my coordinate system right here in the middle. Um, so I am square to grid when I look straight down there but the part is not square to grid so I've got a little different coordinate system on here and we found that to be kind of tough to dial in pins like this that aren't square to that grid he is a little bit on an angle looks like he's square in the uh, in the X component this way but he's truly not straight up and down in the Y or the Z so what I'd like to show you guys today is how to do just a quick little simple coordinate system on a pin or on a pad or on some other part of the of the part if you're measuring a part uh, that makes it just a little bit easier to do some dial in or just to get a little bit better view in which coordinate is uh, is being affected by the variation. So come on over here. I've got my reference model, both my, my CAD models of the fixture and the part. So I'll hide my part with the middle mouse button pushed down. And then notice I've got a pin and a couple pads out there on this fixture. And that is surely not square to grid. But the simple way to do this is I've already got some features already picked out there. Notice I put some planes on there. It doesn't need to be planes, but they seem to work pretty good with this. What I'd like to do then is I would like to build a coordinate system around here with one of the components running up and down the axes or in the direction of the axes of the pin. So underneath my coordinate system here, if you right mouse click and go create Cartesian, notice what comes up here. I've got a dialog box that I can populate and I usually change the name on these. Polyworks will will default to this coordinate sys or csys1. I might call this the the right pin cord system. How's that? Okay. So, but again, I like to do a name on there that's kind of descriptive because some of the models will get a little bit thick and have multiple coordinate systems in them. And you want to make sure you know which one is active and which one's in the report. So it just makes it a little bit easier to give it a good name. So let's go with a primary here. I'm going to pick up on the pin one or the plane. That's the nominal on the, on the pin here. And then I'll pick two and three. Since I've picked them in that order, notice my coordinate system that comes up here. I've got these handles on the on the axes of this coordinate system so I can rotate these things around if I click with the left mouse button I can click 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 and just run this coordinate system in any direction that makes sense for you guys so again I'm just defaulting or I'm just um, uh, playing around here so I'm just gonna keep this one here but X my X component looks like it's running straight up and down the axes. So I'm going to hit the space bar now once just to show you this. If I hit space bar I can do some manipulation of the 3D scene. Now notice that as I move around that is truly running straight up the axes of that pin in this X component. So I'm just going to hit create and then close it out. So here's my little local coordinate system around that pin. Now all I have to do is when I'm manipulating this pin on the tool and dialing it in, I can say, yep, I need to move in the in the Y or the Z component to dial this into its closest condition to the nominal.